This is section 12.8, part 2, and we're going to be looking at finding another set of critical values and then classifying them as maximum, minimum, or saddle points. So let's see. Um, we've got the function xy, e to the minus x minus y, and we'd like to start by locating our critical points. So our first derivatives, f sub x. We will need to have a um, product rule on this. I'm going to go ahead and consider xy to be my first factor and e to the minus x minus y to be the second. So I'd have xy times the derivative of the exponential, e to the minus x minus y, and a chain rule would give me a times negative 1 there, plus e to the minus x minus y, and then the derivative of xy with respect to x would be y. And that needs to be equal to 0. Uh, I'm going to clean that up just a little bit. I'm actually going to factor it. If I factored out a y e to the minus x minus y, that would leave a minus x there, and then just a plus 1 here. So actually, because of the factoring, I think I can solve this right now. Either y equals 0. Exponentials are never equal to 0, so I can skip that one. Or this one would give me x equals 1. Okay. So two solutions for the f sub x. Let's go to the f sub y. Same basic idea. I've got my first factor times the derivative of the second, which is going to look identical plus my second factor times the derivative of the first with respect to y would be x this time. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I could factor out an x and an e to the minus x minus y, which would give you the minus y here, plus 1. So this time I can have x equals 0 or y equal 1. All right, um, I do need to be careful that I match these up correctly. So let's see here. One option would be if y is 0 here, then it can't be 1. It must go with the x equals 0. So 0, 0 is a critical point. And if x is 1, making that one 0, then I would have to let y be 1 to get this one to be 0. So my two critical points this time are going to be 0, 0, and 1, 1. All right, let's go ahead and do our second derivative test. Oh, boy, I probably got ahead of myself there. I do need the second derivative of this, which is not going to be real pretty, but we'll get through it. Um, let's see here. Let me go ahead and, I'm going to be a little creative this time, I'm going to actually use those two things as my first factor, and then I'll use the exponential as my second. So I'd have y times minus x plus 1 times the derivative of the exponential plus the exponential times the derivative of what I just highlighted with respect to x again, which would just be negative 1, right? That would just be a constant multiplier. So y times negative 1, or minus y. Just for ease of use later on, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a minus y e to the minus x minus y, which is going to give me minus x plus 1 here plus another one there, so plus 2. I would expect f sub y, y to turn out kind of similar. I'm going to use the same little trick for my derivative. I'm going to consider that to be the first factor of my product rule and the exponential to be the second factor. So I have x times minus y plus 1 
times the derivative of the exponential plus the exponential and the derivative of what I highlighted with respect to y would be x times negative 1 or minus x. And so I would have factoring out a minus x e to the minus x minus y. I'd have a negative y plus technically 1, but there's going to be another plus 1 here, so plus 2. A little creative algebra can save us a lot of writing. All right, finally, I need f sub xy. So let's see here. Or f sub yx is the same thing, right? So I'm actually going to go back to here. This is f sub y, and I'm going to do the derivative with respect to x. Break this up the same way. I would have x times minus y plus 1 times the derivative of the exponential plus the exponential times the derivative now is with respect to x, right? We already did the derivative with respect to y on this one. So derivative with respect to x would be 1 times minus y plus 1. So, if I factored out minus y plus 1, e to the minus x minus y, I would get minus x, and I factored all of that out, so plus 1. All right, well, that's the second derivative uh, work there. So, what's d? The product of these two, so I'd end up with a positive xy, e to the negative 2x minus 2y, times minus x plus 2 times minus y plus 2. Subtract the square of this one, minus x plus 1 squared minus y plus 1 squared, e to the minus x, minus, actually negative 2x minus 2y when I square it. All right, so kind of an ugly d there. Fortunately, we have some pretty nice uh, points to plug in, right? 0, 0, and 1, 1. So for each critical point, I need to evaluate the sign of d the sine of f sub x, x, and then draw a conclusion. All right, let's see if I can keep f sub x, x on my screen. So f sub x, x, it's this one, and d is this whole huge thing. My first critical point was 0, 0. And if I try to plug that into d, 0, 0 is going to wipe out this whole first term, right? So that's all gone. And then notice here, everything's positive, right? That's squared, that's squared, exponential's always positive. So I've got 0 minus something positive. D is negative, and I have a saddle point. All right, what about at 1, 1? At 1, 1, notice when I plug in the 1's for x and y, that's going to give me multipliers of 0 here. So this is all going to be gone. And at 1, 1, that's positive, 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 and positive. So everything's positive. Minus 0 is going to be positive. And as far as f sub x, x at 1, let's see. At 1, we'd have a negative out here, and then positive positive, positive, so that minus sign carries and makes f sub x, x negative overall. And let's see, positive, negative, that would give me a maximum. So saddle point at 0, 0, and a maximum at 1, 1. All right, a bit more algebra to that one.
Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Maple, see if we can actually visualize this. All right, so here we go. We've got our implicit plot 3D again. And at 1, 1, we were supposed to have a maximum. Looking at it from the top, there's x equals 1, there's y equals 1, so it should be right about here. And you'll notice it's not a real, real strong maximum, but it is a maximum, right? That's the top of a hill there, no matter what perspective we look at it from. We've got that sort of a subtle little maximum there at 1, 1. 0, 0 was supposed to be a saddle point, so look at our origin right in here. And you can see, again, if you were to sit there, it looks like a minimum from this direction. But then if you were to sit the other way, it would look like a maximum from that direction. So that's our saddle point. All right, so there's at least a few examples of finding maximums and minimums and saddle points based on our first and second derivatives. The one thing that hasn't come up yet is that inconclusive situation. What happens if d is zero or undefined? And the answer is sometimes you can kind of logic your way to a conclusion, and other times we really have to rely on technology. So let's take a look at these next couple of examples to illustrate that. In this first one, if I locate my critical points, f sub x would just be negative 4x cubed. And if I set that equal to 0, then x must be 0. f sub y, sort of the same thing, negative 4y cubed, giving me y equals 0. So my only critical point here is going to be 0, 0. Let's test it, see if we can figure out what it is. f sub x, x would be negative 12x squared. f sub y, y would be negative 12y squared. And f sub x, y, I take the derivative of that with respect to y, I'm going to get 0. So d is the product of the first two minus the square of the last one, or 144 x squared, y squared. I'm actually not going to even bother making my chart this time, because notice that if I take this critical point 0, 0 and plug it in, I'm going to get 0 at the critical point, meaning that my test is inconclusive. It doesn't tell me whether I've got a maximum or a minimum or a saddle point. This one, though, I think we can kind of logically decide if you look back at the original function, think about that critical point 0, 0. If I plugged in any other numbers except for 0, 0, I would be subtracting something positive, right, with those fourth powers, from 2. So it's only going to get smaller. The more I subtract, the smaller this function gets. This function is actually as large as it's ever going to be when both x and y are 0. So I think just logically, this should be a maximum. So just by logic, that function is as large as possible. When x and y are 0, 0. So I'm going to conclude I think this is a maximum. at 0, 0. That actually does turn out to be the case if we look over at Maple. Here's the picture of that function, 2 minus x to the fourth minus y to the fourth, and you can see pretty clearly that right there at 0, 0, we do indeed have a maximum. All right, let's try the next one. Here's our function, and again, the first thing I want to do is locate the critical points. So f sub x would be negative 1y squared. 
And of course that would be zero when y equals zero. So y equals zero here. And f sub y, that would be negative 2xy. And that would be zero if either x equals zero or y equals zero. So y equals zero works for both of them. The only possible x value for a critical point is zero, as we can see right there. So we're going to go ahead and say zero, zero once more is our only critical value, critical point. If I go to test this, my second derivatives, f sub x, x, that derivative with respect to x is 0, f sub y, y would be negative 2x, and f sub x, y would be negative 2y. So d is the product of the first two minus the square of the second, which would be 0 minus 4y squared. Okay. Once again, I won't even bother making a chart because I'm going to notice when I plug 0, 0 in here, d equals 0 at the critical point, and my test is inconclusive. This one is much more difficult to determine what's happening just based on looking at the function because if x is a negative number, we could have 2 plus something, whereas if x is a positive number, it would be 2 minus something. So it doesn't seem as though it's necessarily either a max or a min. Let's take a look at the origin in a maple graph. In fact, if you look at this one, here we are at 2 minus xy squared. You can see it really does depend on how we're looking at this. It appears that it would be a maximum when we look at it from this direction. But in here, oh, there's something really weird going on. Might even be a discontinuity in that first derivative. Yeah, I guess it would kind of still be a minimum, though, when you look from that direction. So I do believe that we can go ahead and say that this is a saddle point. So just based on the graph, we're going to go with saddle point here. All right. Um, we will come back and look at an application problem in the next video.